God be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. You know, I, I agree with you, Bishop, because I, I often think in this in this matter, am I being changed mm. by my, my situation, circumstances, and my surroundings, or am I the change agent? Change and I need to be the change agent and bring everything into captivity of Christ instead of me being captivated by Yes. external thing and so that that is my mindset and, and and what bishop just said is is dead on that 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 form of thinking and where where i've been because when i look at this world and this world's this system and how it affects me it's depressing and it it, it vexes me and it takes me to to come back and put my mind on god and knowing that I am an ambassador set in this place to be a change agent to lost souls, then I get the peace of God uh -huh. that surpasses all understanding that guards my heart and mind through Christ Jesus. So then the 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 stress, the 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 worry, the the anger, you know, all those emotions that are tied to this world, this world system are gone immediately once I focus on God and, and my Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. So, and you know, and bitch, I want to throw something else at people too, is that sometimes you be where God seen you be, not to say he just told you to be there, but you be in the place and position to always respond to how God wants you to act. And what I will use the example is, remember the woman caught in the act of adultery? The, I don't think any of us say that God told Jesus to be at that place at that time. But he was still doing, he was doing the work of God, right? But the circumstances came to him. I think the same thing with the woman in the well, right? Bishop, I don't think, he, he, he stayed at the well because he was what? Tired. And hungry. So what I see you saying is that you can be led by external uh, events as well as internal. And be ready in season and out of season when the situation comes. I think when Brother oh. Adam went to Waffle House, that, that was Waffle House because he just went. The, the, just, the, the opportunity came up that God said, hey, I want to use you for this situation. That makes sense? I think the woman at the well, I think the woman caught an act of adultery, Jesus was just happened to be there. Well, I, I, I have a tendency to believe that there are no arbitrary, there are no happenstances in the kingdom. Uh, he's the orchestrator. I he orchestrates all things. I believe it. Yes. Uh, even though I'm, knowing that our mistakes are going to occur, he actually worked that into the scenario to, to, to edify or strengthen or to get somebody saved. Right. Absolutely. Is anything arbitrary about what happens in our life? Well, my point is to say that you might not have been led there for the specific purpose of dealing with the woman as well on dealing with the woman in adultery. It, it, you were led to be there. And by something. Things happen. Yeah. I think we can be more more actively led by the Spirit of God if we intentionally put ourselves in places where God can lead us. Yeah. So it's like, for me again, and I asked the question earlier, Jimmy said, yes, prayer, fasting, studying the word, meditating on, on, on Christ, or like, and it almost seems a stoic or some kind of lifestyle that makes you a monk or something like that. but. But there is a purposeful intent to hear God. Like right now, I logged into Zoom at eight something this morning to purposefully hear what was going to go on here. Uh -huh. I, that was an intentional move on my part. Uh -huh. What I'm trying to do is to, to develop that routine that purposefully puts me in the presence of God. And so I've heard die. I've heard meditate on those things that are, are a good report. And uh, then, the, so now this is the bag that I'm trying to put together right now, y'all. And, and, and you know, it's for selfish reasons that I come to this place in the mornings because I feel like I'm growing. You guys really pouring a lot into my growth. Uh, and the Lord is pouring a lot into my growth through my interaction with you all. Amen. And I really want to hear from God, man. I've I heard that happenstance, like we accidentally hear every now and then. Yeah. And I, yeah. I do that a lot. I accidentally hear. 
<laughs> but I want to be more purposeful than that, so I don't have to go through some of the hardships, I think, unnecessary hardships yeah. that I've experienced. And I, I believe we really can't hear. I remember that one scripture where it says that this was written that you might believe. Yes, sir. That was the whole book. At the end of the book, he says this was written that you might believe. It didn't say that you might follow, but that you might believe there's a God out there to follow. Amen. You know, and, and our God is alive, and and that's the thing that I'm really coming to realization of. Just like me talking to y'all, God talking to us. We have an active conversation right now going on with the Father. He's broadcasting, but am I tuned in? And, and and I think what I'm trying to do right right now is just to kind of fine tune my instrument so that I can hear what He's saying more readily. Amen. You know, and it, and, and to close with that too is that go back to Mark 16. He said they went. Remember, brother, as in verse twenty, they mm -hmm. went everywhere. Yeah, that that that's a very broad yeah, preacher. Yeah. Yeah. But it's saying, "Go, we all been sent." Yeah, and just go, and God, yeah. and, and if I was to walk by faith, not by sight, walk. And as you go, and as just like those people here, as you went, yeah. as you go, go ahead. And just about that. See that text implies uh, something that I think is, is uh, it, it's probably just as essential as your as your perception in situations. Uh -huh. See, when you're in a situation, Woo. If, 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 if you if you tune in and you can use your eyes or tune spiritually, mm. see through the situation, see something that God is doing. Wow. You don't see the situation, you see through the situation. Okay. But you see, the other thing I believe that what God really needs from us is a commitment to availability. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. You see, you see, God wants to keep you in a mode of constant availability. Mm. And where you're at, what you're doing, you are available to God. Woo! Listen, there can be nothing in your life that will ever hinder your availability to him, no matter where you are, no matter what you're Ooh. doing, no matter what it is, you are available to God. Woo! And that's why he said everywhere. <laughs> then, you see, this is the thing that I think also hinders us, is that we got some things that puts that makes us unavailable. Mm. Defiled. Nah, let's go with unavailable. Let's go with that. not defiled. And, and, and I and I realized a long, long time ago that it didn't matter whether it was on my job. Yes. In inconvenient places. Yes. Come on. Or in times where you utterly afflicted, might have been ashamed, or felt you might have suffered some loss. Come on. Well, no. Are you available? Are you available? Ooh. Because to abide in me. Me imply that you are always available to God. Wow. Now, let me say this. I, I sent you guys a while back. I sent you a text on Matthew chapter 11. Them last three verses where it says, Come unto me, all you that heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Yes, sir. When I sent you those verses, my thoughts were dealing with this very conversation we were having this morning. Wow. And later on, I sent you another breath while I said, I think it's time not to add Colossians chapter 2. Y'all remember that text? I think so. Let me I see. Do. I do. Chapter 2. You see, in, in those verses, those verses are going to help you discern how to answer a lot of these issues we've been talking about this morning when it comes down to that kingdom work of God. Uh, I think it was verse 29, the last one, verse 29, I think it was the verse that was, I was trying to get to. It was Colossians What, what did it say, 229? With Col Colossians? Yeah. What Colossians 229. It's not Colossians. Y'all in the wrong one, son? That's, that's Colossians right here. Yeah. It goes to 29. Verse 29. It's a 92, not a chapter 2. Colossians okay, 29. 1. Okay. Yeah. 129. Yeah. You gonna read that, Brother Addison? Whereunto I also labor, 
striving according to this work which his, worketh in me mightily. His working. You That's see, work. you see, this becomes a very, this is a very delicate thing that we're talking about right here. This is the distinction between the, the helper wheel, the crib, or the front line. Mm. You see, Paul understood that he, he was talking about, listen now. He, he said, verse 24, so he said, he's talking about himself. He said, I've not rejoiced in my suffering for you and fill up that which is behind of the affliction of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. Mm -hmm. you, you see, when you come down to this real, when you get focused on what this mission work is really all about, you find that it's always about love and always about the other person. Right. It is going to always be about love and it's going to always be sacrificial in order for the other person to benefit. Mm -hmm. So that there is always, in a sense, a dying going on inside of you. For somebody else. In order for somebody else to be, to be helped along the lines of the kingdom mission. And that in itself is the very heart of the work that God has called each one of us into. Mm. He said, well, if I made, I made a minister according to the dispensation of God who has given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Even the mystery which has been hid from ages, from generation, but now is made manifest to his saints. Mm -hmm. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of the mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you. And this is true for anybody in the kingdom. It's Christ in you. In you. Yes. And in this other stuff. It, it, all, it all comes down to not only what that Christ is in you, it is to what degree you yield to him to become one with him so that Christ can really evidence himself in this world. Mm. That is, that, that's awesome. That really ties back to preaching the word. This is the word. Yes, sir. This is the word that he will confirm with signs following. Can, this right here. Can I, can I throw a little piece in there too on that? What that is that it best you know, he didn't put Jesus in there itself. He put the anointing. Jesus, we know Jesus Christ. Jesus the anointing. This is saying, if which is the anointing or the anointed one in you, but it's it's it's, it's an anointing, isn't it? That, that's making a difference because he's emphasizing something, right? When we leave out Jesus Christ or we leave out Jesus of Nazareth. It's talking about that anointing. That was to focus it, the anointing. But you see, when you see, here's the thing: you when we start reading these texts, it, it's kind of like what happened when you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Uh -huh. I, if you go, if you go preach from a verse in Mark, you better go see what Matthew says about that same thing. You better mm -hmm. go see what Luke says about that same thing, and you better go see what John says about it. Uh -huh. But you're going to find that every one of those guys bring a different kind of truth to that same place, that same text. I think we get getting... the fullness of the truth. It is, it is wise for you to go look at what everybody said about that thing rather than that to take what John said about that thing. Mm -hmm. So it is with this. When we start talking about the workings of God within us, we got to take into consideration what the whole truth of Scripture talks about. Mm -hmm. For example, Paul says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Christ is living, expressing, Evidencing, manifest himself, thinking, inspiring, he's moving through me. In mm -hmm. that last verse of what he tried to he, what he really trying to get it, he said, Wherefore I also labor, striving according to the workings. To his work. Which worketh mightily first within. What you see on the outside is only the evidence of what is happening mightily within Paul's life. So we often talk about how Paul is this great apostle, but what we really fail to realize is the mighty working of the spirit deep within Paul that yes. produced all that working. Right. And yes. each of us, if we would come to realize that God has called us into that same body. Mm. Paul is a member of the same body of Christ. Yes. And I would say the same anointing. Yes. And, 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 that, and that becomes the focus. 
is this puppet moving because the puppet moving or am I moving it? If you are annoyed with it, or you annoyed at the puppet or annoyed at me, it would have to be me. Because the puppet can't do anything in and of itself. The focus is never on us. If Jesus is taking out a scenario, everything that we're doing is vain, it's, it's garbage. You don't want to take that out, you're right. So, so the, 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 the whole thing it says in the end, it says, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that the anointing is God. Yes. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus. Jesus Christ. So everything comes out of this. We got one single focus, one single man. We got one, and he's the only point of contention that is in the universe. There will never be a, a, a compromise or reconciliation of darkness with light, and he is light. So we can reconcile Buddha and, 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 and anointings and anything else we want to. We can even reconcile God when it gets aside from Christ. Christ is the point. He is the point that the one name that Satan's afraid of, one authority that he must yield to, only one person, never my deeds, never what I'm doing, no T.D. Jakes is no. It's the anointing. It's not, it's it's not the anointing. It's the man right. by whom the anointing comes. It's there the, is no anointing without Jesus. It's not for yeah, us. Yeah, I agree. I agree. That's where the power of the Holy Spirit yeah. comes in. Go I ahead. This last point. I'll be done. Go ahead. I want you to focus on in verse 29 the word labor. Yes, sir. Because in Matthew chapter 11, this is what Jesus says. Come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden. All right. But here he's talking about labor, and what he's talking about in Matthew is a different kind of labor. Both of them are labor, but one of them laboring is causing men to be tired and heavy laden and burdened. But this labor, which is being initiated and wrought by God from the inside, this is the real labor that he's called you to. What he's trying to call men out of in Matthew chapter 11 is yeah. that labor that they were doing out of themselves. Out of themselves, right. Yeah. It's the laboring that you try to do when you read the scripture and say, thou shalt not, thou shalt, uh, turn the, the one cheek, if they smite your one, turn the other. It's when you try to do that. <laughs> you try to do the work is grievous. <laughs> you find all of this stuff here rough right here. But when the spirit of God is working on the inside of you, woo! I, I didn't hear Stephen say when they took up stone to stone here, boy, this show rough right here. Boy, this <laughs> no, the Spirit of God has undergirded him now. And Spirit is safe to be, Stephen is being moved and carried by the Spirit of God. Mm. He testified before the Sanhedrin, and even while they have they have taken up stones to kill him and are stoning him, he said to them, lay not this thing to their trouble. He did, right? He just didn't say it out. <laughs> So there's a difference between the labor that we see in verse 29 and the labor that Paul is, that Jesus is talking about at Matthew chapter 11. Mm. Matthew chapter 11 is calling you out of your own self labor. And here you see that he's got a labor for you. And that's what Jesus was saying. The father worketh hitherto. And I work. And I work. Yeah. This is the kingdom work that we want to focus on. And this is how we will be able to fulfill the eternal purpose of God. When we learn that it's not us being able to initiate the thing and trying to do it out of our own power. It's the but this power is not only for laboring. The other verse 24 says this power is for suffering. Mm. To endure it, right? It's for dying. The reflection of the anointing. I think, yeah, the I think that, that the anointing, anointing, uh, yeah, that anointing on you allows you to. The anointing, I think, empowers us to abide in Christ. Yeah. And if we abide in Christ, then Christ will work through us. Right. Our yeah. anointing is not an empowerment for us to do a thing, but our anointing is, a, is an empowerment for him to allow things to be, for us to allow him to do things through us. I, I think so, as if it's the, the anointing allows us to, right? The anointing it, it empowers us to, to, empowers to abide. Us. It empowers us to go by. Right. It's that anointing. So we just need to continue to work and allow the anointing to remove the burden. Well, we, 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 you know, there was something that you, when he said allow, you know, I mean, to, and I said uh, defile, you said uh, 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 buy it. What, I can't remember what, what yeah. you said. But mm -hmm. the, the, it says not that goes into a man that defiles him, but what comes out of him. 
Yeah. So there is a place where this puppet can, and not of its own will, where it can stay on my hand or it can come off of it. And that's, that's, the, that's where we lay. We can't do the works of Christ, but we can abide in him in such a manner that he can work through us. That's and I think that's where the deceptions are going to come in and why it's going to be so easy to deceive because it says that in the end times that even if it were possible, that even if it were possible, that even the very elect would be deceived. Yes, sir. If we abide in Christ, yeah. doing those things that keep us in alignment with him, then when he starts to work through us, it's not something we're even taking on our own because we know he do it. Like they rent their clothes. Yeah. When they tore their clothes, they're like, man, it ain't us. It's, it's, it's who's working in and through us. So we come to that point where we know we didn't initiate the action, so we can't take credit for it. But for those who are not submitted to Jesus of Nazareth, they're going to be able to do some stuff that's not initiated of Jesus of Nazareth. And it's going to look a lot like stuff that Jesus of Nazareth is doing. But we who know Jesus of Nazareth and who have submitted ourselves to his leading won't fall prey to that because we'll understand who's getting the glory out of the whole life. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, not... you know, I'm thinking that that's what I'm saying is the anointing. Because that jawbone, Jimmy, wasn't the reason he used the jawbone to feed the army is the fact that you know a jawbone can't do nothing. But there's the anointing. The anointing, the anointing is a person. It's yes, come on. See, we, make sure you understand it now. The anointing is a person. Uh -huh. it's, it's the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. Yeah. Woo! It's yeah. a, so listen now. In, in, in Matthew, Jesus is telling them, Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Okay? So he's calling them out of work. Uh huh. Uh huh. But then he says, Take my yoke upon you. Yes, Wait sir. Minute. Wait a minute, I thought you were calling me out of work. You were talking about us. Now you're talking about a yoke. Because I want you to use anointing. A yoke implies that you've been get, you get ready to go back into work. Yeah, but it's still... It's a, Take my yoke upon you woo. and learn of this. Yeah, let the I Holy want, Spirit... I want, to call you, I want to call you out of flesh and then word of power work and show you how to enter into the work that God has you were created to work. Woo! So, so, uh, when they say the six days shall you labor, uh -huh. on, the day, on the seventh day, there was the day set aside for fellowship and communion with God. Yes. On the seventh day, only God is allowed to work. Woo! And it's through the power of the Holy Spirit. Now,